A dispute over language. English speakers in Cameroon say they are treated as second-class citizens. Activists are mobilizing online, and the government has begun arresting its opponents. So, what does this mean for Cameroon? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the program. I'm Rochelle Carey. The internet has been cut. Opposition leaders arrested. There are students striking. And parts of Cameroon have come to a standstill. If you're wondering what's causing all of this, it's language. The English-speaking minority says it's been mistreated by the French-speaking majority for years, and they are now demanding change. Much of the activism has been on Twitter. The hashtag Bring Back Our Internet went viral after the government cut internet in English-speaking areas more than a week ago. There were also violent protests last year. And thousands of English-speaking teachers, lawyers, and students were on strike to protest against alleged marginalization. The government says the internet blackout and arrest of political leaders are necessary to maintain peace. Although French and English are the official languages of Cameroon, most people speak French. But those in the northwest and southwest regions, which were colonized by Britain, mostly speak English. That's about a fifth of the country's 22 million people. They have long complained of discrimination and often talked about their own state. English speakers say official documents are always in French and that the language barrier disqualifies them from most state jobs. The split is also seen in the courts. The French and English-speaking parts of the country use different legal codes, and many fear that could lead to misunderstandings. Let's bring in our guests in Cameroon's capital, Yaoundé, Elvis Ngali Ngali, a former cabinet minister in Cameroon's government. In Paris, Julie Owono, head of the Africa desk at Internet Without Borders. And in Budapest, joining us on Skype, Albert Nchenda, a Cameroonian political analyst and a blogger and thank you all for joining us. Um, Elvis, I want to start with you. What message do you think the government is trying to send by shutting down the internet? Well, um, I think the, I'm not quite uh, sure from a technical standpoint uh, uh, whether or not the internet is shut or down or and to what degree, but I know that um, my internet is um, is free. But as to your question, what message? It is very clear that um, the government has as um, a regalian um, duty uh, to protect uh, the general interest, uh, to uh, protect and guarantee national security, and to make sure that the laws of the republic are respected by all one, uh, by everyone. And I think that uh, while the internet is an important tool of uh, of modern life. It is also uh, important to know that uh, it's not supposed to be subject to abuse by users. And the government has a regalian interest to ensure that uh, everyone using the internet uses it within the limits of the law, and that if the law is violated or, 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 or broken, uh, naturally the government will use its powers under the Constitution and uh, to, to, to protect the general interest and protect the law. Breaking the law in what way that you see it? Is, is, is just being critical of the government something that people should not be allowed to do on, on the Internet, on social media? No, in, in Cameroon, uh, this is, we are free to, to criticize uh, and, and to express ourselves and criticize the government also, and that is done on a daily basis. In fact, <laughs> it's a way of life. To criticize in Cameroon is a way of life. I know that, and I'm sure you know that too. But the use of the internet uh, is not only done in criticizing the government. A lot of people, a lot of users, use the internet to, to intimidate, to give false information, to disinform, to misinform and uh, to spread falsehoods and, uh, and, uh, and, 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 to, and to use that medium uh, to, to create chaos, sometimes provoke um, psychosis. Obviously, I don't think the law allows for this. I think in all countries, democratic countries for that matter, whenever users abuse uh, what the law provides, uh, the law takes its cause. Uh, I think this is what it is. We believe in the rule of law, and I think that the rule of law is what prevails here. Julie, what is your understanding of how limited 
the internet access is now. Elvis says he has it. Are there patches that, uh, of the region that still have it? Do so. Uh, ex explain to me what your understanding is of what the access is. Well, one thing is sure is that we are receiving daily reports from uh, people based in, uh, in uh, Buea, Bamenda, and other cities, main cities of northwestern and southwestern region who have, who have to travel to Douala, which is the, the closest, I mean, one of the closest uh, Francophone-speaking cities uh, in, in Cameroon from these Anglophone regions. So they have to go there to be able to access the Internet. So uh, this obviously proves that these people cannot access internet up, up until today. And um, uh, some operators uh, even send uh, SMS to these uh, users uh, because only internet is not available. The, the normal telecommunications uh, channels are still available. Uh, and namely the SMS, uh, and th they receive SMS from operators explaining that due to reasons beyond their control, uh, internet service is not available. So probably some uh, have the privilege of having still having access to the international bandwidth, but one thing is sure is that a majority of the people in uh, of normal citizen, I would say, I would call them in, 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 in Anglophone regions of Cameroon, uh, alert us, alert many others on the fact that they cannot access internet and they have to find other ways, sometimes very difficult, sometimes very costly, to be able to access to a tool that, as you were saying, Sir Ngole, is uh, essential to daily life, but also essential uh, for the economic life and for the work of many people. This said, uh, I would like to respond and add some elements regarding the the reasons for the shutdown order, uh, because it is now acknowledged and and, and proved that uh, th there was a governmental order order to uh, to to shut down the internet. As you said, one of the reason might be that national security must be preserved. But I would like to remind everyone that Cameroon uh, signed as a republic signed many international texts, including the uh, civil uh, the Pact on Civil Rights and. Uh, politics and civil, political and civil rights, sorry, as well as the UN Dec Universal Dec Declaration on Human Rights, which both pr protect freedom of expression, freedom to communicate, freedom of opinion, and uh, as an extension, also protect th those freedom on the cyberspace. Mm -hmm. uh, I would also like to remind everyone that uh, the UN Human Rights Council recognized that those texts uh, which were adopted and signed by many texts, uh, many countries uh, by in the UN, are now being applied in the cyberspace. And those texts, as a limit to the state power to limit this freedom, imposes to the state to justify the national st uh, so, state ju ju uh, argument and justify it with the with the help of a legal authority. And in this case, Julie, no legal I'm authority has been con has been uh, consulted to uh, assess whether there was a national security. OK, threat. and you bring up a, a definite a lot of valid points that we're going to come back to to talk about what the, the rights of people actually to be able to to access the Internet and what type of right that is. But I want to bring in Albert for a moment. Albert, what role does the internet, does social media play in the lives of the average Cameroonian, particularly as it pertains to politics? Basically, the social media is very important now to many citizens in Cameroon, both the Anglophones and Francophones, because the government failed multiple times in informing the public with the right information. You can imagine that on the social media platforms, you don't have the prime minister available. You don't have other ministers available to provide up-to-date information. And so we have to depend on bloggers and other journalists who would be able to update Cameroonians on information. CRTV and other state-sponsored uh, media outlets fail to inform the public. And in fact, most of the people would only want to twist the facts and be very biased. So most Cameroonians trust the social media because this is the only platform where you can have freedom of expression freedom of opinion, and you can debate fairly, and you can send up-to-date information of which the government would never provide this data for you. Um, Elvis, you have, a, you have a response to that, I could tell. There's no doubt about that. And uh, the first thing I would like to say in response to what I've just heard is that uh, in Cameroon, uh, respect for freedoms, respect for 
uh, international agreements or accords is the norm. And, 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 and this is a country where many people, no matter whether you're Anglophone or Francophone, believe in the rule of law and respect that. And the government, which is a government of the republic, is committed to uh, the rule of law. I don't know of any law which says that because you're a Francophone or you're an Anglophone or whatever, uh, that uh, you don't have the right to, 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 to use the internet or to, you don't need to, to blog in Cameroon in order to get information. And for anyone to say in Cameroon that the government does not give information or they don't have a way of getting information, I think that is a, either a misreading or someone doesn't want to accept uh, what is real. Look, you, whether I'm in Yaoundé or in Douala or in Bamenda or in Boya, I'm as free as a Cameroon as I could be anywhere else. I don't see why one would think that you need to become a blogger in order to get information, whatever information you want. But what if somebody, what if somebody, of security Elvis, what if somebody just wants to be a blogger and share information? You are free to be a blogger, but it's not because it is, you, you are not a blogger because someone has blocked you from getting information or from having access to some information. Uh, you, if you decide to be a blogger in Cameroon, that's your choice, but it is, you are not a blogger because uh, you, you have been deprived of so, the, the okay. opportunity okay. to get information from somewhere else. Well, since we have a blogger on the show, Albert, why are yes. you a, a blogger? <laughs> First of all, what the minister said is very, very false. Why is this false? You can understand from him that he's in Yaoundé, and this is to show you the division in Cameroon. The internet is available to the French-speaking areas, and the internet is not available to the English-speaking areas. These English-speaking people are forced to travel to the French side just to be connected. Businesses are shut down. Some other businesses incur a high operating cost because of the lack of internet. And secondly, what the minister said about blogging, most people blog because it's a passion. Some other people blog because they are forced to inform the people they love. We have so many journalists in Cameroon who love giving information. And they feel it very important that information should be shared in a timely manner. It should be up to date. If something occurs today, you should be informed of it so you can take decisions based on what you heard. But the government will twist the facts. The government will inform you late. The government will have polit politicians who are pro-government who would come on the TV and analyze the situations only to suit the government. And what no, the minister said so, about... Hold, hold on, gentlemen, gentlemen, hold on, gentlemen. So, and what the I, minister said about freedom, we do not have this type of freedom. Because uh, if no. we had this type of freedom in Cameroon... That, you know? No, 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 that's very wrong, sir. Okay, no, Albert. because I live here, I don't know where you are, uh, uh, but I, I think for you to say that the government twists information, I think that then you don't, you either decide not to understand okay, what Elvis, the government you, Elvis, you is, have or made, you are Al Elvis, you have made that point, and, and Albert okay. made his point, and we also have Julie, who is part of the discussion as well. Mm -hmm. Julie, there mm -hmm. are, for the government yes. to be able to mm -hmm. shut down the internet anywhere, these companies, there are companies that have to cooperate with them to make this happen. Do you think those companies have a duty to resist? Well, first of all, I would like to say that cooperate is probably uh, a strong word because, <laughs> uh, it, it, yes, well, to be fair with those companies, we have to remember that they have, uh, I mean, to be able to operate on those markets, they have to, to gain licenses to be able to use uh, the, 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 the network. Uh, and to do so, they have obligations that are imposed by the states. So many of those operators, whenever they face uh, such order that comes from uh, a government to shut down or to limit access to communications, they, ha well, usually they justify themselves by saying that they have obligations due to their license, which is true. But on the other hand, to be also fair to users and to citizens, uh, it is true that these same companies are uh, bound by international text as well. And I'm talking specifically about a text which is called the UN Guiding Principles on Business and Human Rights, which tries to apply those human rights, which we know, which some of which I, I, I named a bit earlier in the show, and try to apply them in the business sector as well, including when these companies operate in very tense environment, uh, such as, for instance, when a country says there is a national security issue and that we need to limit certain, certain freedoms. So uh, 
the, the challenge now in, I would say, in the 21st century is to have these same tele telecommunications company apply these principles the same way as oil companies had to have to apply them today because there, were, there was a lot of advocacy uh, surrounding the issue of, uh, you know, oil exploitation, but nevertheless protecting and not harming local communities and the environment. Mm -hmm. So today, the same issue is uh, is a, is a, is a, it's the same issue in the in the te telecommunications industry. How to be able to secure a business sure. without right. uh, eroding the trust of users and of citizens, and without violating, I mean, assisting sometimes uh, without uh, will uh, assisting government violate human rights right. of uh, of, the, of their users. But just a little uh, precision as to access to information. I would just like to remind that Cameroon has not yet adopted a freedom. Of Information Act, which was, which would in, indeed confirm that in the Constitution, in the legal, uh, in the legal text in Cameroon, it is normal to access inform public information. Okay, so um, let's let's go. This is all happening against the backdrop of English speakers in the country saying that they are being marginalized and discriminated against, and in fact. Um, at some point, the, the plan is for French to become the official language in schools, in courts. Elvis, what does that say to the English speakers? No, first of all, um, we said English speakers are, are, are striking. Some English speakers have struck, and everyone knows, and uh, we are living with that. That is to say, the, the English speaking teachers association uh, syndicate, they, they are on a strike. The, the English speaking lawyers association, they are on a strike. They have uh, expressed uh, what their concerns are. And they, are, they have been working with the government through ad hoc and permanent committees to find solutions to these problems. That is known, and that is working. Now, How is and it I don't working? know of anyone within the law who would be against someone striking. In fact, they have been acting and proceeding with the government in order to find solutions. But of course, that does not mean that if any one of them or if any citizen decides to go out of the law, that the law will just sit and not take its course. Of course, the law continues to be the norm and, uh, and, 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 and it will take its course. Does that mean that because you are English speaking, you, you, you should abuse the internet or abuse the law? No, I don't think so. It, whether you are French speaking or English speaking, as long as you are a citizen under the law, you are protected by the state of Cameroon, but you are also obliged by the state of Cameroon and the law of Cameroon to make sure that you respect the law, okay. even if you don't agree so, with so it. So, Albert, so let me ask you this. The, uh, how are English speakers in Cameroon that feel that they are being marginalized, how are they voicing this in, in the social media realm? All right, first of all, the English speakers feel very, very marginalized. And first we had the teachers who were on strike and they submitted to the government their concerns. It was ignored for a while before. The lawyers did the same. And the government opened dialogue with these people. But first, you have to understand that the dialogue was opened based on people on the streets fighting for their rights. Why can't the government open dialogue without protest? People had to protest, and so many people died. We don't have any commission inquiring about the, the people who killed them. OK, now into the point of dialogue. Is it a problem for people to dialogue and question the government on the terms that they would require a federation? This became a taboo to the government. And then the same people you dialogue with are the same people you arrested. And right now they are in jail. This is very wrong, because if you say you are pro-dialogue, you have to come on the table with all the terms. The strike was about the teachers and also about the lawyers. but. At a certain time, the government had to understand that this was no longer about teachers and lawyers, but also the society as, as a whole. The Anglophones generally expressed to the government their discontent with the system and the whole government itself. And the government, instead of discussing with them, decided to be very, very repressive. The police have beaten people up. Some people have died. 
And in the course of the dialogue, the teachers and lawyers said they would like to return into a federal system. Yes. If the Constitution had been m manipulated several times or updated by the government, what is above the government to sit down with all parties involved and negotiate on the terms which they could so have Albert, a federation? So, Albert, let's, yeah. let, let's let Elvis let address that. that. If I may, I can respond to that. Yes. yes, I mean, I take issue with what he's saying. Look, dialogue is what has been the main policy instrument of politics in Cameroon, of nation building, of state building in Cameroon. Dialogue has always existed, and every Cameroonian who is a bona fide citizen of this country believes in dialogue. I do believe in dialogue. I understand that the young, the person speaking also believes in dialogue. And dialogue has been going on. It's not today. Dialogue has been going on for 56 years, my, I mean, my, my dear compatriot, I assume. And we believe in it. You and I assume we agree on that, that dialogue is the way. Now, if you are engaging in dialogue, that means that there's no taboo subject. You, you say that uh, federalism is taboo. Federalism is not taboo. They have talked about federalism in Cameroon for, 50, for 56 years. And we continue talking about it. No one is allergic to it. But we should understand that in talking about it and in expressing that that's what you want, that does not give you the right to break existing laws okay. and make as okay. if law doesn't exist. Okay, so let and me... So let me okay. If indeed it's is, is federalism you want, I, Elvis, you should Elvis, you've made your point. the limits Elvis, of the law. Elvis, you've made your point yes. repetedly. I understand. We, we, we heard you that you're saying that, that you're open to dialogue, but that you want people yes. to remain within the parameters of the law. Julie, let me, law. Let me ask you this. Um, do you think it's accurate to say that government-directed internet outages uh, are becoming more and more common in African countries? Yes, unfortunately, uh, what we have witnessed uh, at, at my organization and at others uh, is that more and more uh, in Africa particularly, state resort to such radical solution for from two reasons, for various reasons. First of all, uh, is that it is true that uh, compared to other places in the world, the internet and social media in particular have played a huge role on the African continent. We have to remember that it's a continent that was cut from the rest of the world, literally, uh, because up until very recently, only a few had access to means of communication with the rest of the world. And it, today, we, we, we've passed from that, we've leapfrogged from that to today having people with two or three mobile phones that can reach uh, in, a, in a matter of a second people uh, in other places of the world. So obviously this has a consequence. And the second reason for, you know, the, the the fear, I would say, from the government on the use of social media is that uh, this, uh, this huge, the abilities of this uh, mean of communication uh, have been used by citizens in a political way, uh, African citizens particularly. Uh, several uh, research have proved that Africans particularly use the, the internet for to, to voice some political concern and to advance some, some political issues. So obviously for states uh, that have been evolving in a very close environment, it's a challenge. And you either adapt to the challenge by interacting with your uh, with your citizens and constituencies, or uh, by uh, opening up a bit more your governance, and if, or and if, and you if governments well, don't, resort. if governments don't adapt, what could the consequences be? Well, they they of course will resort to the to the situation we are facing now in a country like Cameroon or uh, in countries like uh, Congo Brazzaville last year in in DRC in Uganda in many other countries. Uh, but the, the problem is that. Uh, citizens are probably less and less tro tolerant to that. Mm -hmm. And the, the great example is uh, Cameroon, once again. Uh, who would have talked about Cameroon a week ago, uh, especially in those terms, uh, saying that it's a country that violates uh, the human right, right to expression of, of its citizens? Nobody, not even Edward Snowden. And today, Edward Snowden, who has 2.7 million followers on Twitter, talks about Cameroon because Cameroon is uh, making a, uh, the headlines made their, for the wrong reasons made their once voice, again. They made so, their uh, voice heard. Yes, so, so, so I think that, it's, a, it's a challenge for states to adapt to that openness. And that will be the last word, Julie. Thank you so much. Thank you to all of you. you, my guests, for Thank this conversation. So Elvis much. Ngali Ngali, well, Julie Owono, and well. Albert Nchinda. That'll have to be the last word, sir. And thank you all for watching as well. You can see the program anytime. If you visit our website, 
aljazeera.com. For further discussion, go to our Facebook page as well. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can join the conversation on Twitter as well. Our handle is at AJ Inside Story. For me, Rochelle Carey, and the entire team. Bye for now.